I need to start, right? Like, it's 5.30. Um, okay, so I'm here to talk to you about the MySQL universe in 2018. It's a very exciting time to be in the MySQL world. So who am I? I work at Percona. Before that, I was on the founding team of MariaDB server. Before that, I used to work at MySQL. And just to make sure it's all fair, I, I own options in Percona. I own shares in MariaDB because they bought our company. And I actually bought Oracle shares, so I, I'm interested in the entire ecosystem from a financial perspective. So I, I, I love everybody. <laughs> um, extremely mature ecosystem, right? So MySQL is nearly 23 years old. And you may think, oh god, what an old code base. It must be horrendous. Actually, Oracle's been doing a wonderful job of making it better. So 5.5, that was heavy refactoring. 5.6, even more. 5.7 and 8.0 seems to be getting even further refactored. And 8.0, actually, they're paying a lot of attention to uh, making sure things like are, are, are well sanitized. And I think a lot of the people who are engineering MySQL now are actually engineering on the new code base, to be fair. I think most of the engineers here never had to touch the 5.1, code base, maybe at all. Percona server is also like nine plus years old. MariaDB just celebrated its eighth birthday. Uh, because it made its first release in uh, February of 2010. Drizzle, anybody here heard of this one before? It's obviously dead. And uh, WebScale SQL, I think you, are, you had a question about the Facebook tree and uh, you know, they, they tried to, to make WebScale SQL the tree that everybody would use, but it turns out that uh, it's, it's actually quite hard to make everybody use one thing. And uh, they, they still uh, actually keep a Facebook tree um, independently, whereas uh, other people like who backed WebScale SQL like Twitter actually stopped and they actually migrated back to stock MySQL. And Facebook, I mean, I, I don't think they're as big as Oracle's engineering team to be fair, but I think they have easily about 20, uh, 20 to 25 production engineers who actually can change the code base. But the bonus of what they do at Facebook is they've also got a MyRox team to do, and they've got the RocksDB team. And the engineers who deal with MySQL can go in and actually change the, the query patterns, right? They can go and change queries, or they can just block stuff off. So why did WebScale not really work out? It turns out that I should just read from this. Uh, it's from their blog post. They said, we learned over the course of this experiment that sometimes each company's needs may not be similar enough to make sustained collaboration possible. Everyone was at a different stage of MySQL lifecycle timelines. This, uh, this is absolutely true. So out of all the WebScale SQL players, uh, this includes Google, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Everyone ended up using uh, some variant of MySQL as a base. Google actually switched to uh, MariaDB 10.0 as a base. And then they heavily forked MariaDB 10.0 to have um, data at rest encryption, which is what you see in MariaDB 10.1. And uh, now they're the only ones internally running MariaDB 10.0 fork but they don't offer it, as, say, as part of their cloud. So if you use Google Cloud SQL, which I think they have a bunch of talks here, they only offer MySQL as a service. Uh, we don't actually have any learnings from why Drizzle died. Lots of people were very excited by Drizzle, but one of the major learnings from that was don't have all the core developers hired by a single company. Because Rackspace hired everybody. Rackspace said, look, we're not so interested in this Drizzle thing anymore. Why don't you do this OpenStack stuff? And then, boom, Drizzle died. I know this is really small. I promise the next slide will be better. It's actually made by a guy called Daniel Van Eden. You can check this out from GitHub. I've modified it to make it more accurate for the current situation today. So that's, that looks maybe reasonably more, much better. Uh, I think uh, we've had some important milestones in, in the past. So in 5.5, InnoDB became a lot more scalable. And I guess the added bonus is that InnoDB became the default storage engine. So it set, it set the path for everybody using InnoDB. 5.6 had a whole bunch of optimizer enhancements. And I think tomorrow's talk on the optimizer will not even cover all the 5.6 changes. It will cover everything that's, co that's cool in 8.0. But it should not be discounted that there was a lot of work done in 5.6 and even in 5.7, to be fair. Pacona Server 5.5 actually um, was the first uh, to port group comment into binary logs. So that means that instead of calling fsync each and every time you call it in a group, ported it from MariaDB, and then eventually 
MariaDB released it in 10.3, uh, in, in 5.3, and MySQL has an implementation in 5.6 that, that sort of differs. And uh, now, of course, we're at a stage where MySQL 8.04 is in its second release candidate. Then they did something weird with the version numbers. They, they jacked it all up. It's now, so the next release will be 8.0, was it 10 or 12? 12? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and MariaDB is in its uh, second beta, so the race is on to see who releases a GA first, because it turns out that um, MySQL 5.7 and uh, MariaDB 10.1 were released two days apart from each other in October of 2015. So, open source community, we're at a, we're at a FOSS Asia conference, so everybody here is all about FOSS. I think uh, if we had to rank everybody, MariaDB probably ranks the best in terms of accepting community contributions because you can send in code either via this thing called the MariaDB contributor agreement, which is very similar to what the Sun contributor license used to be, or you can just commit code as BSD new. Um, MariaDB also participates actively in Google Summer of Code. In fact, this year they're, uh, they are still a participant. I mentored every year except this year, because I have other things to do. But Google Summer of Code is excellent, and uh, in addition, uh, not only has MariaDB mentored students, and have shipping features. Also managed to hire developers to join um, and develop MariaDB going forward. MySQL 5.7 has taken, say, one good example is this thing called generated columns. Um, you can obviously contribute, but you can't commit to the code base. Uh, in fact, if you look at the 8.0 uh, release notes, there's a whole bunch of people being credited, including uh, Percona, Facebook, a whole bunch of companies that contributed to MySQL, which is great. Percona? We could do a much better job in terms of um, allowing people to write code or commit code. We tend to only want to work on stuff that's um, customer related. The other thing that's probably important when it comes to an open source community is who is going to maintain the code going forward. I think you can't just say, hey, this, this feature looks cool. Let's just take this drive-by contribution. And then you also want to ob obviously evaluate what is the state of community contributed code. So we, we actively do this uh, even, say, at, uh, in Percona server where we have things like, oh, handler socket as an example where you could actually make uh, CRUD operations, uh, create, read, update, delete operations directly to InnoDB skipping the entire uh, SQL layer of MySQL. But then we realized people don't really use this very much nowadays, so that, and it's not really well maintained. And then there's this memcached interface which can do put get. Why don't we just get rid of handler socket? And nobody's complained. A lot of people say MySQL is dying. You know, Oracle, Oracle actually has owned MySQL now of more or less for 10 years. I mean, we just celebrated 10 years of selling to Sun in January. Oracle probably can celebrate some eight or nine years of owning MySQL. So honestly, Oracle obviously isn't bad at all. Um, MySQL keeps on getting better at every release. Uh, there's a lot of external contributors, shared knowledge, which is why you know people know what InnoDB is about, right? Nobody says, hey, go use MySQL cluster so much because not everybody knows what NDB cluster does internally, but they know what InnoDB does internally. MySQL is extremely vibrant in terms of the ecosystem. There's plenty of tools. I, I wish I'll show you a handful of them as well. I think MySQL 5.7 has a whole bunch of underrated features, like a lot of people don't talk about them or use them. Uh, Multi-source replication, for example, is, is very handy when you have multiple masters writing to a, a, you know, a single node. I'm hesitant to now say master and slave because in, um, in some places people get offended by that, even though that's how we, we, we call it, leader, <laughs> follower. <laughs> Everybody's getting more politically correct now. <laughs> um, things like statement timeouts, um, turning on GTIDs in an online fashion as opposed to having to restart everything in, in, like, like you did in 5.6. Um, resizing the buffer pool in an online fashion, which actually does obviously, while you do a resize, it will actually um, feel like your queries are not being processed, but you, know, you don't have to restart the server, which is so much better. I think this, these last two features are extremely underrated, right? The whole uh, MySQL shell, XDAV API. I, a lot of people always talked about having you know, JSON functionality, but then the, you know, did any other open source projects say, we're gonna start using it? 
No, we haven't really seen that. And that's partially because we need to talk about it more. And even encryption at rest. I split the MariaDB once from 10.1 to and 10.2 because they have made two releases in that same period. Of Star transaction with consistent snapshot came into 10.1. Uh, well, it was, it was around even before 10.1. It was a byproduct of group commit. That is also now actually in MySQL 5.7, so another maybe underrated feature. Uh, having Galera cluster integrated is actually quite nice. And I think um, going forward, you'll see more from the MySQL world in terms of group replication. So that's something that even uh, we have not done at Percona, where we, you just get one download and you get to turn on Galera replication or not. Um, the thread pool. How many of you here write web applications? OK. You, what, what do you write not at web applications? Or? Me? Yeah. Only the has a web part. OK. <laughs> so most, most web applications, anyhow, they, you know, they're short running queries. They maybe run in less than one second. And that's why having something like a thread pool makes a lot of sense. Um, MySQL has this in, a, in the enterprise release. MariaDB and Percona server have this in an open source fashion, which is kind of nice because the way, because MariaDB made it first, Percona enhanced it, MariaDB got to take it back, and everybody's better off because that's how open source works. Um, extending the regular expressions uh, came in MariaDB 10.1 as well. And this is actually, the, the, the regular expression library in MySQL 8 has also changed, which is maybe another feature that needs to be talked about more. <laughs> And, and roles, SQL standard roles, very important. And why, why, why these last two features, again, didn't come from MariaDB core developers. It came from <coughs> Google Summer of Code students. So we, we mentored them for three months, and they produced real usable code that we could push to the server. In fact, this guy even got hired, the roles guy. Hired by Google, or? Uh, no, hired by MariaDB. MariaDB. Yeah, Google wants other people to hire. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they're only going to give you that $5,000 stipend. Ten two came out and uh, big change in MariaDB in the sense that InnerDB became the default InnerDB. That means they, for the first time, MariaDB stopped shipping ExtraDB as the default InnerDB. There's also a MyRox alpha release. If you're doing uh, large-scale analytics, uh, window functions kind of make sense, also coming to MySQL 8. Recursive common table expressions, similar. AWS key management, so it turns out that when you encrypt uh, your data at rest, you may find that you need an external key server of some sort. The easiest way to get started is to keep the, to, to use the file key management plugins that are available, but it turns out that if someone breaks into your server, they'll walk away with said file, which is obviously pretty stupid. So then you get this key management plugin. So most of them offer very expensive solutions, but AWS offers this with the power of your credit card, and MariaDB 10.2 actually includes uh, this as well. Mm. Yeah. Pacona Server 5.6 and 5.7 is not a fork of um, MySQL. It is a branch of MySQL. It still remains, it, it aims to be always very close. It aims to co constantly be a drop-in replacement. And the bonus of everything we do at Percona is we like to contribute back upstream so that we don't have to maintain it. The engineering burden goes back to Oracle. Which is <laughs> 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 a bonus. Actually, it's a very good way to have sustainable engineering because at Percona, we have a whole slew of products and our engineering team is approximately less than maybe 35 people. And that means we, and, and that's also us doing, you know, Percona server for MySQL, MongoDB, the monitoring and management. We managed to keep things small because we managed to contribute things upstream tremendously. And we like that. We like that model. Uh, so every time we make improvements to ExtraDB, we also do contribute them. And sometimes Oracle accepts them and then they credit us. And then we don't have to maintain it any longer. Um, we make a lot of enhancements that are focused generally around um, usability, manageability, Mo the ability to monitor things. We, we really focus on of it from a DevOps standpoint, and then we hope, hope that upstream gets it, and then we can move on to doing other things. But we also are happy to remove things. So at, at uh, 
previously, before uh, in 5.6 and, and previously, if you wanted to warm up your InnoDB buffer pool, we'd have this idea called InnoDB fake changes, which will actually do these operations and then roll them back to warm up the buffer pool so that when you have a start, your, you know, your 60 gigabyte buffer pool isn't all cold. Um, then we said, look, we don't need this feature any longer because it's actually, it's kind of hacky. And MySQL has uh, interest schema parallel replication available. So if you want to actually um, warm up your buffer pool, you just, turn, you just start using interest schema parallel replication to replicate across, and you've already warmed up your buffer pool when you start the server. And that is um, you know, a proposed solution that we have to replace um, cake changes, so we can remove features. I don't know how many of you have read this blog post before, but maybe, maybe it's well worth looking at. It's, a, it's fairly long. It might be like 10 to 12 pages long. And at one stage, or maybe it still is probably the most popular blog post on the Procona website, because it compares MySQL with MariaDB as well as Procona based on a white paper that um, MariaDB wrote. And that's going to be what I speak about over the next uh, maybe 10 minutes or so. so we, we always like compatibility, and in a database, we care about the fact that you may want to move around from one database to another. I'm sure if you tried you know, MySQL, you may want to try MariaDB because it has a new feature, and then maybe you want to go back to MySQL. And uh, compatibility really matters uh, from a standard standpoint as well. It matters a lot because uh, MariaDB server is the default MySQL in pretty much every Linux distribution except Ubuntu. That means when you ask for MySQL, you get MariaDB for free instead. So all the cool MySQL features that are not ported to MariaDB, you suddenly can't use them, which means all this wonderful engineering that Oracle puts effort into goes unnoticed. So I, I always like to say to distributions, take a page out of the cloud offerings. You know? Amazon, for example, doesn't just offer RDS MySQL and say, hey, here's MariaDB for free. They don't. They actually tell you you can choose MySQL or MariaDB. Um, Azure just launched this week, as in it became a generally available product. Um, they offer MySQL in GA and MariaDB as something coming up later. Rackspace has offered my, you know, MySQL, MariaDB, as well as Pacona server. Um, Alibaba and Tencent. Alibaba has put money into MariaDB Corporation and the foundation, and Tencent has put money into the foundation. And none of them offer MariaDB in the cloud. They only offer MySQL in the cloud. So, so taking a page out of the cloud providers can actually mean that it might be better to have MySQL being MySQL and MariaDB being MariaDB because they, at one stage they were both different variants of apples, but today they're an apple and an orange. So generally speaking, uh, MySQL 5.6 should be comparable to MariaDB 7.10.1, and 10.2 should be compatible with 5.7, but this is not necessarily true because it's not necessarily a drop-in replacement. Um, but it, it, it is drop-in in the sense that you can use the same uh, data directory, the same port, and uh, that's where maybe part of the confusion starts. Governance, again, we're at a, we're at a fast conference, so it's, it's well worth talking about governance. MariaDB, um, obviously it has a corporation and a foundation. And the foundation's goals are there to ensure that if the corporation gets acquired, the found, it will never be such that um, the source code could go to another company. Like it will always be free and open source, even though MySQL is free and open source. But there's always this worry that Oracle would do something odd to it. Oracle hasn't, so kudos. Um, MySQL, of course, is... Um, owned by Oracle by way of Sun and MySQL AB. Uh, and uh, Percona, we, we're not ashamed to say, yeah, we're, our software is owned by us, and we hope we just like to give code up so upstream so that we don't have to maintain it. Uh, I also like to uh, uh, ask this, this question generally, you know, is there vendor lock-in with open source? And you know, generally speaking, the answer is yes. You can be vendor locked-in even with open source. Maybe you like one insurance provider better than the other. Uh, and uh, I, I also like to look at other things like you know, how many times websites have changed and so forth. And web.archive.org, great resource. So the MariaDB project uh, officially only started in late 2009, uh, right before Oracle acquired Sun. And uh, these are basically the current releases that you can, you can take a look at. And uh, Percona server generally is anywhere between three to six months back of a release. 
uh, of a MySQL major release. But when it's a minor release, it's probably within the same month. So replication compatibility. The easiest way for you to migrate from uh, one database to another is to replicate. So you, you would um, upgrade a follower or slave, and then you would maybe promote that to become the master. So if you were running, say, MySQL 5.7 in, uh, on the master, you'd upgrade, you'd upgrade say, to MariaDB 10.3 on, on the slave to see what it looked like. This table suggests that it is much easier to migrate to MariaDB server, but you can't migrate away from MariaDB server. And why is that? It's because MySQL uh, global transaction IDs in 5.6 and 5.7 are different from MariaDB's global transaction IDs. So what MariaDB does is MariaDB filters out the global transaction IDs, so throws it away, and assigns its own global transaction IDs inside replication. Now MariaDB can do that, but MySQL doesn't. So MySQL sees the replication packet and, uh, and MariaDB's GTIDs and goes, oh, I don't know what this is. This is garbage. Replication breaks. So Migrating to MariaDB, easy. Migrating out of MariaDB, hard. So in a way, it's like this song called Hotel California. You can check in, but you may never leave. <laughs> <laughs> you can dump the data and, and, and load it up again, though. MySQL dump works, generally. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, yeah, so replication as well. So MySQL uh, has been using row-based uh, replication as a default for some time. MariaDB has chosen to, to do um, mixed mode and also turn on uh, annotating the row, uh, the bind, the, these parts that, that are based on the row, which is odd because then your bin log size starts growing, growing in size. So this is a default that you probably want to change. Uh, but there are some very interesting new features like uh, this idea of DML only flashback, which actually changes um, MySQL bin log tool to actually roll back instances and, tab and tables to an older snapshot. And Alibaba does this in, in, in its cloud on a regular basis. And this is actually unique to MariaDB. It's written against MySQL, but they've ported it to work on, my, uh, on uh, MariaDB. Uh, in terms of synchronous replication, there are two different types of syn synchronous replication available today. Uh, there's Galera, which um, MariaDB server has a built-in. There's Pacona XDB cluster. And Codeship, the company that makes Galera, also makes a MySQL. 5.7 version of it. And then there's this other idea of group replication, which only works in MySQL or Procona server. It doesn't work on MariaDB. Group replication is supported by Procona? Procona server, yeah, we, we totally support it. And we like, we like it. We hopefully. No, I never saw any blog, uh, group replication in Procona. Oh, yeah, the plugin actually will load. Procona server has no problem loading the group replication plugin. Our hope, <laughs> now this is being recorded, is that group replication more or less overtakes XDB cluster over time. Because we're, we're now putting engineering resources behind XDB cluster to make it better. But we would like to focus on group replication, which also works on this um, OS that I personally don't use, but many people use called Windows. So we, and uh, we are still waiting for um, Galera cluster four for many years now. It's been maybe three years. We are still waiting for the next release. We don't know how much longer we can wait. But yes, we, we do support group replication. Um, <coughs> X protocol only works inside of um, MySQL. It doesn't work with MariaDB. Oh, when I say it works with MySQL, it'll definitely work with Procona server. It is a drop-in replacement. <laughs> Uh, is anyone aware of the X protocol and MySQL SH? And it doesn't work in Oracle? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> clearly you need to market this more. Uh, encryption. MySQL 5.7 and uh, MariaDB Server 10.1 both have um, data at rest encryption, but implemented differently. Um, MariaDB has table space, entire table space encryption for InnoDB, as well as uh, uh, ARIA temporary table uh, encryption, whereas um, MySQL only does this table space for InnoDB. Um, Google Patch only does table space encryption, but MariaDB enhanced the Google Patch to also do table encryption. Nobody does uh, column encryption. Uh, 
encryption of logs is uh, is done in, in MariaDB, but not in MySQL. But Procona Server, the latest release in 5.7, does encrypt logs as well. So that might be something to, to look at. MySQL requires you to, to use InnoDB file per table, whereas the MariaDB variant doesn't. Um, generally speaking, though, this has been a default for some time, so you should just use it. And the MySQL yeah. implementation, of course, works fully with um, Percona XDB cluster, whereas the MariaDB version does not uh, encrypt the Galera cache, the Gcache, inside of um, the MariaDB version. So it's not fully encrypted. Performance schema. It's an excellent piece of underrated kit that is uh, disabled inside of MariaDB and is actually uh, shipping a much older version from the 5.6 variant. Performance schema has improved tremendously in 5.7 as well as 8.0. So I, I expect more people will, will turn on performance schema. The, I, the answer with MariaDB is don't use performance schema because user stats exist. And user stats is light, lighter weight, that is true. But I believe that come MySQL 8.0, user stats will go away because performance schema is also fairly lightweight. Percona server also has user stats, but we expect it to go away. Oh, no, no sys schema either. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna go much faster now. In, uh, in terms of security, MySQL uses this thing called SHA-256 password, and it's gonna be turned on in uh, 8.0, caching SHA-256 password. MariaDB decided not to implement that, so it's implemented ADD25519, which is based on uh, the elliptical curve digital signature algorithm. So that n now means that if you um, use MySQL 8.0 to create a user and a password, and you try to migrate to MariaDB, it'll break. You'll have to recreate said password, and vice versa. This is going to be incredibly annoying for human beings. Um, it would be much better if MariaDB just implemented the SHA-256 password thing too, as well. Uh, Validate password is on by default in 5.7. It's not available in, in MariaDB, so you could have a, a weak password in, in theory. Uh, SSL linking is, is changing rapidly as well. Uh, MySQL user table has changed as well inside of um, MySQL and Percona server. However, with MariaDB, it still uses the old MySQL user table from 5.5. So if you have scripts that actually make use of the MySQL user table, you now have to check against uh, MariaDB and MySQL. Uh, there's no password expiry available inside of MariaDB yet. There's no way to tell you if the password, when was the password last changed and, uh, and a lifetime. You can't lock and unlock an account like you can in MySQL. And uh, this SQL function is also missing inside of uh, MariaDB. Optimizer hints came to um, MySQL in 5.6, something that we still look forward to in MariaDB. If you're doing automated failovers, this, I, this option called super read only, which allows the, which, uh, which ensures that the super user itself is also read only, can't accidentally write to, uh, d during a failover. This is a very useful feature. It came out of WebScale SQL, the Facebook, and the Facebook tree. And uh, this is in Percona server, MySQL, as, but not in MariaDB yet. Um, MySQL is shipping a whole bunch of nice new tools that one could use to make things easier. If, it, if the tool requires global transaction ID to work, well, it will only work with MySQL and Percona server, not MariaDB. There's a huge, wide, and varied ecosystem out there, and uh, many of these tools um, work with all distributions available. Today, when would you use MariaDB server? Uh, if you wanted to use TalkyDB, uh, or should I say Percona TalkyDB, then you, you could use MariaDB server. If you happen to still use MyIZAM, uh, then you definitely want to turn on segmented MyIZAM key caches. Though really, you, you should upgrade to InnoDB. I don't know why you'd still use MyIZAM. The connect storage engine is kind of handy because it allows you to do ETL operations. You could connect to an ODBC data source and import the data into InnoDB. You could connect to um, MongoDB, for example, and import um, its BSON files. The thread pool is awesome. Open source PAM authentication. Uh, open source Kerberos, as well as Active Directory authentication, so stuff enterprises may want. Um, window functions, uh, as well as... Um, uh, uh, 
Optimistic parallel replication could be useful. Uh, this is what happens when, uh, when if you have a master that is um, running MariaDB, say, 10.2, and a slave that is running 10.2 as well. Uh, the, you can actually send replica replication packets um, not necessarily in order, and it will still be fine. As, so especially across multiple schemas, it could be faster. Optimistic parallel, replica parallel replication exists in MySQL too, but um, the optimistic version is kind of handy. Roles, of course. So you could be, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley compliant. When do you use Percona server? Largely, when you want to have better um, scalability, performance, flexibility, diagnostics, and so forth. If you want to use Myrox, the engine that basically powers all of Facebook's user database, totally. We have a GA version available today. ExtraDB, which is a better InnoDB. Uh, TalkyDB, of course. Things like um, the ability to enforce a storage engine, or if you're doing OpenStack deployments and you need a utility user, that means someone to make changes to the adv to administrative changes to the database that do not actually have access to the schema. That's what a utility user does, and that's that's useful when you when you're running it in an automated fashion. If you want column compression as well, perfect a perfectly. Um, Good idea to use Percona server. So the idea is if you feel like you've outgrown MySQL, maybe Percona server is right for you. But for everybody else today, um, you should probably be using MySQL 5.7 or trying out 8.0. If you, if you don't fit in the other buckets, MySQL 5.7 is, is very awesome. Very, very near future. So this, when I say very near future, I expect before, before summer is up. Um, MySQL 8 is awesome. Many of you were in the previous talk as well, so um, you heard about what nice new features are coming in MySQL 8. MariaDB Server 10.3 will be out also in, in the summer, and uh, it is going to be more compatible with Oracle because the idea now is to um, have a SQL mode called Oracle, SQL mode equals Oracle, which will allow you to parse a lot of Oracle as Oracle syntax as well as PLSQL. Not all of the Oracle syntax, not all of PLSQL, but a subset of it. So. They claim it's an 80% subset, but um, it's, it remains to be seen at, the, at this stage because I myself am not like an Oracle user. How many here use the Oracle database? Nobody. <laughs> okay. And of course, a um, couple of other features like the proxy protocol, which you also have inside of Pocono server, and uh, so forth. You want to always have freedom from vendor independence. You want to make sure that uh, when you're looking at a at a, at a product, how many support vendors there are. So it's, it's fairly obvious that Oracle probably will not support a MariaDB in instance. Whereas if you go to Percona, we support MariaDB, Percona server, MySQL. Um, MariaDB now more or less doesn't support MySQL. They only want to support MariaDB instances. But there are other providers too, like PCN and so forth. And they, they tend to support every, everything. Uh, you want to beware of vendor lock-in. And uh, definitely know the difference between a branch and a fork. Um, a while back, this guy called Michael Stonebreaker is really big in the database world. He said, um, when Facebook uses MySQL, it's a fate worse than death for them. And he, he suggested everybody use his, his new database. I think it's called VoteDB or something. Well, it turns out Facebook thought that was pretty funny, so they made this little t-shirt. And uh, they, they've actually probably migrated even more workloads to MySQL since, um, since then. So pretty much all of Facebook runs it. So I think mastering the ecosystem takes a lot of time because you know nearly over 20 years. Um, but I guarantee you that once you've mastered it, you'll be you'll, you'll never be a fate worse than death. Uh, with that, I can answer your questions. Hopefully, that was a quick overview of what is available out there in the MySQL world. Any questions? You yes. said extra DB, which is a better version than InnoDB, then why is the <laughs> recent, before you said that uh, now MariaDB is not going for extra DB and they are going for InnoDB, so. Yeah, so um, why why is MariaDB switching from extra DB to InnoDB? So they, so, so they hired a core InnoDB developer, uh, and uh, he says that the changes to extra DB now are fairly marginal, that they would rather fork InnoDB rather than and actually, it's, it's called InnoDB, but it's not InnoDB. So if you look, uh, if you look at a code-by-code code comparison, you'll realize that the InnoDB inside of MariaDB is not the InnoDB that is shipped in, say, MySQL 5.7.
And they didn't want the pain of merging two variants of InnoDB. They wanted to only merge one. And going forward, come MariaDB 10.4, they're not going to merge InnoDB any longer from MySQL. Um, largely, that's also because the way MySQL has changed um, its underlying structure, MySQL 8, and MariaDB doesn't want to follow said changes. So they're going to cherry pick uh, patches from InnoDB uh, and in instead of uh, making it a merge. So they're going to call it InnoDB, but they're not, it's not going to be InnoDB. And in fact, the 10.3 InnoDB is also not the same as 5.7 InnoDB. They've changed uh, a lot of um, random little features, like removing copy and swap and stuff. So it's largely because they are, MariaDB has decided they also like to fork InnoDB. Whereas Percona is keeping ExtraDB, we'd say like the parallel double write buffer, for example, but it, Percona doesn't want to keep ExtraDB there all the time, right? They very much like everything to just go upstream, which has been going on for many years. <laughs> and I think even Oracle hired uh, ex Percona InnoDB developer, Yasufumi Kinoshi. People move around. Any other questions? Okay then. Thank you for listening. I have a oh yes. Okay. So for DB, uh, like uh, you said, like MariaDB and uh, Percona supports like is still supported by MySQL. I have used my in MySQL five point six. Uh, yeah. So TalkyDB is still supported inside of MariaDB and Percona server. Um, we are still developing TalkyDB, but uh, we're putting more energy behind uh, MyRox because MyRox also has compression and uh, arguably probably performs better. So yes, we, but we have customers on but both yeah, sides, on Percona and- a very large data, it can process faster and- Yeah, um, for insert MyRox performance. In memory, so yeah. different uh, for different work. Kind of for different workloads, but generally we believe most people will migrate from TalkyDB to MyRox eventually. So maybe in another two years, give or take. So even it's the same with uh, MariaDB, right? Uh, because they have customers who are using MariaDB 10.2 and TalkyDB, but once 10.3 comes out, talk, MyRox will become a generally available engine. And maybe by 10.4, enough people migrate. I, I don't know. But from a Percona standpoint, we expect to support TalkyDB in MySQL for at least another two years. And uh, we already GA'd MyRox, so we're ready to continue telling people it's okay to migrate, and we, that's what we like. And it's much better to have MyRox uh, being developed by not just us and MariaDB, but also Facebook, right? <laughs> so um, we remember the whole idea of we like to work with upstream more than we like to do make our own stuff. <laughs> it's a much more sustainable form of engineering for a, if you want to keep a smaller engineering organization. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, um, if we were going to say, let's make our own engine, it's, uh, it's pretty expensive. It's, I mean, we know the cost of developing, say, extra DB, which is why we like to send things upstream. And um, the cost of you know, forking you know, DB, even in MariaDB, is probably more expensive than you expect. The cost of forking is expensive, <laughs> which is why it's much better to just work with upstream, don't fork. And if, in this case, Percona is the upstream for TalkyDB since we acquired the company. <laughs> yeah, TalkyTech uh, was acquired by Percona many years ago, 2013, I think. Yeah, that's how Percona went into the MongoDB market as well because uh, TalkyDB had a MySQL and a MongoDB product. But in the MongoDB world, um, Percona has stopped developing TalkyDB because there's this thing called MongoRox, which is um, the Facebook version. Yeah. MongoDB for RoxDB used at their PARs. They don't have PARs anymore, though. but there are probably other uses of MongoRox. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come back tomorrow. <laughs>